the the show you did after after the death of, of Kobe Bryant because yeah. that was something like just completely and then how do you prepare for something like that and how do you do it because you you went out to the yeah. arena out there and there was no game it was just you all sitting on the court right and it was um, it was so it was so surreal Frank because I mean that's you know he passed that Sunday and I was driving home from North Carolina I had been speaking at a, a church in North Carolina that day and. I was having a great day because in attendance at that church service was uh, my baseball coach when I was 10 years old who and his his son is the pastor at this church and and so we had this wonderful time that day and I'm driving home and my son my oldest son calls me and says have you heard the Kobe news and and I I hadn't I'd been just listening to music and driving through the mountains of Carolina and um, and then I turned uh, the radio on and listened on the rest of the way home and and it just it didn't seem mm -hmm. it didn't seem real you know 41 years old and had begun this next chapter in his life with Academy Award and all these plans and beautiful family um, and so yeah we we went out there to do the we went out there to do our show before the Clippers would play the Lakers and then we learn on Monday, okay, the game's been canceled, but we're we're still sending you guys, and you'll just do it from Staples Center, and um, and you know how TV works, you know, you build a show, here's an hour pregame show, and it's divided into five or six segments, you know, commercial breaks are all in there, and it turned in from a five or six segment show, it turned into a two segment show. Um, just because the talk was so powerful mm -hmm. and the emotions were so laid open um, that our producer Jeremy Levin called our sales folks and said hey the way this show is going it's not going to seem right to take a commercial break and they said do what you have to do which was awesome I thought because in this day and age, no, no we got to have those commercials you know no and and so yeah so we had Basically, the plan, the plan was just to let everybody have their say, and I think it was I think it was um, it, it helped in the healing for us. I know, uh, you know, Shaq hadn't said a word about it until then, and Jerry West mm -hmm. yeah. was, I mean, and all you can do is give them their space, give them their room, and I think, as I said before, we even started that show. This is going to be a hard show. But I don't want anybody here to feel like you got to talk in a soundbite. I just want you to talk. I just want it to come from here, you know. And that's what they did. And it was, it was. I've never been involved in a show in 30 years at Turner like it. Never. And uh, and really never want to have to do another one either. But yet you, the way you were able to guide that. I mean, it, it's like in. It's almost like you were, and you've never been that type of person, but you were able just to kind of take yourself out of it. Because we all know there are certain people who feel they are the moment. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know, but it was, whatever, but, but I think we were all going to have our say. Mm -hmm. And we're all going to come at it in a different way. And, some, and for, for the guys who have competed against Kobe, you're going to see it one way. Mm -hmm. Their memories are going to be different. Um, for, those who, for those of us who cover him, uh, we'll have another take. But um, I think that day, um, what had really been what had really been in my heart and on my mind for those two days was what now for these families and this wasn't a basketball story this was a story about families being shattered and it was just heartbreaking mm -hmm. to to see all of these families shattered in that one instant um, so I think that's kind of what I wanted to the perspective I wanted to bring to that conversation was, was exactly that.